Hello everyone, that's just got easier with the visual calculation. Have you ever been struggling with DAX and you think DAX is too probably too advanced for you? And I think this is the best way to start um, getting works done easier. If you are familiar with doing plus and minus in Excel and then easily just do your calculation very easily, this is the same vibe that visual calculation is giving us. So I'm going to show you the visual calculations that just came out last month in the new Power BI release. Let's go right into it and let's see the magic that these visual calculations can do. To create the visual level calculation is quite simple. You just have to make sure that the visual where you want to create the calculation is active. Uh, just like you can see on my screen, I have this table visual now, which is very active, right? Uh, what you have to do is click on the visual. Then here on your home screen, you will see new calculation. So just click on new calculation. Once you do that, you will see a formula bar popping up right here, showing you that you are ready to write a calculation. So let's get started with writing a simple calculation. You know, like in Excel, where you just write a simple plus or minus multiplication, you can do the same thing with this visual calculation. So I can say, okay, I want to know the revenue, right? I just want to minus my cost from my um, other value. So I can just say uh, my other value. So you, if you type the name of the column inside the visual, it's going to bring it out just like this. Sum of other value minus my sum of cost, right? And I'll hit enter. Once you do that, it's going to create a calculation for you. Look at that. This is revenue just by minusing this from this. So this gives me revenue here. You can see it's a very simple calculation. Then right here to the side here, you can see the new calculation that you just wrote called revenue here. You can also come to this FX button here, right, to insert an expression. Let's say you don't want to write a simple calculation like the one I did. If you come to the FX button here, you will see the different calculations that you can actually choose from based on what Microsoft has provided. For now, I'm sure different update is going to come into this um, in the nearest future. So let me start with uh, running sum. Let's say, for example, I want to create a running sum on my sum of costs. I can easily do that by clicking on running sum. And once I click that, it's going to create a calculation for me automatically. You will see this is a running sum and this is the measure it's using. So this is a visual level measure measure or let me say calculations right now right running sum so i'm going to put the feed that i want to sum in there so the feed i want to sum is the sum of cost right sum of cost and i'll hit enter once i do that you can see that's created the running sum for me you can see this the running sum face value for january is the same but the second month is actually doing a running sum so this plus this will give you this this plus this plus this will give you this and this is actually perfect it makes calculation easier especially for those that are actually afraid of writing dax or dax is kind of complex for you this is how you can actually play with dax and make your life easier let's try another one i'm going to try also the moving average and then um, you will see that by just clicking on this it has generated a measure for me and it's just give me um the feed i need to put inside this measure so the feed is still sum of cost i want to do a moving average on sum of cost right now the window size simply means that how many did you want to do a, a, a moving average on did you want to do a moving average based on three four five that's the size like because for me i have month here this is like 12 months so i can just say i want to do a moving average on 12 months and then once I hit enter, it's going to do a moving average based on that. And you can see it's doing a moving average based on this from this to here. This is the, the first one is actually almost the same that the second one, this is where the uh, real average starts, right? So this is how to play around with this. Let's also try another one. So if you come to FX again, we have versus previous versus next versus first versus last. These are all amazing ones that you can actually try. I'm going to give you an example of these two later. But let's try versus any of these versus, right? Let's say, for example, I want to do a previous month. I just want to get a previous month, unlike before, where you have to kind of remove your filter contest with calculate and all that, right? Here is pretty simple. So if I click on versus previous or something, let's just say I click on versus previous, right? Um, it's going to generate, let me just do PM here, previous month. So it's going to generate a measure for me saying that put a feed here minus the previous, right? But okay, let's say I don't want to do it minus previous. I just want to show the previous, right? I can say previous sum of cost, right? Previous sum of cost, and then I can either click this or hit enter. Now you can see that it has generated a previous month measure for me. And this is the previous month saying that this is this, 
this is this right this is like a previous month it's it's it's, it's very very amazing it's actually interesting let me show you another example of another one i can also say versus last so let's say for example i want to compare january versus december i want to compare this versus this right so i can say sum of cost sum of cost minus the last figure which is uh, still sum of cost right so the last figure in sum of cost so if i hit enter right now it's going to compare all of these versus the last figure can you see that it's just comparing all of them versus the last figure and that's kind of amazing right so let's you can even make it as more complex as you like you can make it as more easy as you like let's try an example of this percent of uh grand total and percent of parent total i'm sure a lot of people have been seeing this like what is percent of parent and percent of um uh grand total okay let's try percent of grand total first right and i'll come back to percent of parent so i want to divide the sum of costs still want to do the sum of costs versus you have the collapse hall that's the collapse order you have here what do I want to collapse since I'm doing percentage grand total it's still sum of cost and then what axis do you want to do this based on now the axis you want to do it is based on rules right it's based on rules I'm going to show you an example of when you're going to use columns right so once I select rows you will see that and I hit enter it's going to do a percentage of total based on all of this right percentage of grand total right but the reason why you can't see this is because it's not formatted and that's another limitations that um, the visual calculation have as of as of now i'm sure microsoft is going to improve how to kind of format it later but right now the limitation is you can't actually format the um uh the visual calculation but you can actually write a calculations to do the formatting yourself so i can either go back here look at it this is where all my measure is i can select them as i'm selecting them they are coming back right so i can go back to the last one that i wrote and i'm going to add another calculation that's going to format the uh the, this measure right now i'm going to say format right i'm sure some of us are familiar with this format this guy right and then i'm going to put it in um just um in percentage right so i'm going to say 0 0.0 percent 0.0 percent i'm going to close that now you see that i have the percentage of total now now this this percentage of total is kind of very small for each of the month so what if i want to do a percentage of total for the first category before the the first layer before the the, the category which is month before category right so i can easily go to back to fx and use this percentage of parents instead right and the difference between that is this as collapse hall why this has only collapse the new one that I, we just want to write now has only collapse right percentage of parents so let me clean this and let's select this again percentage of parents right so i still wants to do a sum of costs sum of costs and then here still sum of costs sum of costs and the axis now is still rows remember right it's still row so once i click enter so it's going to create another calculation for me and then this is percentage of uh, parents now percentage of parents now compared to the last one that we wrote right this percentage of parents i can actually format this as well now if i don't want this to show look at this 0.04 i don't want this to show for i don't want the total percentage to show actually i just want uh, only the months to have something like a percentage of total so i can actually make this complex as well by writing probably um another measure right i can say um if is in scope so i'm going to use is in scope right if month is in scope that is when i want you to do the calculation so i'm going to type month and then you can see month here so if month is in scope let me close the bracket for my is in scope put comma if month is in scope that's when you should do this calculation else um probably i can say you should return one or probably you should just return blank right so uh, let, let's just say blank for now or i can even say uh, just return maybe one let's do one right and close our bracket and hit enter so you see that anywhere you are you have this is going to return one 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 for each of the total right because that's actually uh, what the percentage looks like now let's format it so i'm going to go back in there and then say format uh, this my calculation right and then format it by 0 
percent, right? 0 0.0 percent, and it eats. Okay. Okay, so now you're going to see this. So you have 100% for each of the total, 100% for each of the total. Now, if you want to do a comparison, it's also very simple. Let me just do an example of one more comparison. Let's say I want to do a calculation and then I want to write a calculation, so let's say month-to-month -month percentage, right? I don't need to actually go here before I do that. I can actually start directly from here by clicking inside this formula bar. So I want to write month-to-month -month percentage growth right or difference right so i can actually declare different variables from here to say variable i want to declare this variable called current month right and my current month is just my sum of cost the sum of cost that's my current month then i want to declare another variable for previous so my previous is basically my previous remember the measure for this one is previous right so previous sum of cost so it's going to take the previous uh, measure previous number. So previous sum of course, and I'm going to do another VDB again for results. So in this result, I just want to divide my current minus my previous, right? So I'm just going to say divide uh, my current, current, right? Current minus previous, then comma previous. Current minus previous comma um, previous, right? Then I'm going to close my bracket. Then I'm going to return this variable right here. I'm going to say return. And then I'm just going to format the result. Remember, there's a limitation of formatting. So I can format uh, the visual calculation. But I can actually do that by just using a measure to do that. So let me do 0.00%. Uh, right? Then we close our bracket. And then let's hit um, enter. And right here, you can see our month-on-month -month percentage just by writing the visual calculation. We did that right inside our visual calculation. We don't have to kind of do it separately with a measure, right? It's very, very interesting. So once you are done with that, you can actually hide some things here. Let's assume I don't want to see some of order. I can actually hide the figure from here, and it's not going to show in my, in my table anymore. Can you see that? It's not showing in the table anymore. I can hide any, any of the things that I don't want to see here. You can delete any of them if you want. But let's go back to the report. Now, you, you will see that we have different calculations compared to what we have before now. So we have more hierarchies of calculations uh, compared to uh, what we have before. And this is kind of make a lot of sense. Now, let me show you another example for column, right? In a situation where, okay, let me duplicate this table. In a situation where you are using this same um, um, approach or visual calculation for for um, columns, there's a way you can actually do that. So I'm going to remove, uh, probably let me just remove all of this from here. Let me remove all of them from here. So I have my sum of cost. I'm going to remove month as well. So I'm going to remove month. Now here, I'm going to use a matrix visual, right? A matrix visual. And in this matrix visual, I'm going to add quarter to these um, uh, columns, right? So let me just look for quarter and add quarter to columns. So I have a columns like this. So can you also do a visual calculation on this? Yes, you can, right? So we go to new calculation and I want to do a running sum on each of these uh quarter, right? You now can actually do a running sum. So if you come here and I select running sum, I'm going to add my uh, sum of cost to this, sum of cost. Now you're going to add a comma and add how you want this to be here because this is no longer a row, right? It's column by column. I want to do a sum of cost to say quarter one to quarter two plus quarter three plus quarter four, right? So once you type columns, right? You're going to see that here. You're going to see that here. Once you type columns, so you can actually see columns, right? So if I select that and I hit enter, now you're going to see that it's going to create a, a, a running sum for me. So look at this running sum here. So the first one is the same. The second one is like a running sum, which is this plus this. The third one is this plus this plus this. The fourth one is this. So I can switch off um, some of order. Let me just show the high so you can see this. So you see that the first one, this is the quarter one. This is the running sum up to quarter four. So this is the running sum. So any measure you are writing, even though you want to do a previous quarter. So let's assume I want to do a previous quarter here, right? I just want to say uh, previous quarter. So if I come to um, versus previous, right? So I can say my sum of cost. Sum of cost minus my previous sum of costs. Previous sum of costs. 
some of course but i am going to add columns to this right because this is now in a column sense and also in the rule sense as well because i'm doing this versus this versus this right i'm doing previous at the same time as um uh, columns at the same time as rules so i can pick columns rules here right for this versus to kind of make sense and you see it here so this is versus previous so this is the previous you can see it's almost the same with this this one is comparing versus the previous so and it's kind of making a lot of sense so you can use this same visual calculation in chat for those that wants to create a chart as well is very very simple so if i go to this page here you can see i created a visual calculation inside here as well uh, i just did a moving average so if I uh, click on my new visual calculation, so you see the calculation I did for the moving average here. It's just the moving average, and I can see that on the chart. This is very interesting. Let me know what you think about this update in Power BI. Let me know in the comment section, right? Make sure you like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.